This is the 2012 Dodge Charger, the second generation of Dodge's resurgence of the Charger. It's the XST Plus, which means it's got a few special goodies. The reason we had to drive this is because this is one of the first post bailout cars from Chrysler. But the other reason we're driving it is because this car is now a party of one. Chevy no longer makes the Caprice. Ford no longer makes the Crown Victoria. Except for the Chrysler 300, which is pretty much the sister car to this one, we're done. That's it. This car is by itself in the marketplace. If you want to get a large family hauler that's rear wheel drive, you're talking German or Japanese cars starting about $10,000 more expensive than this. It has eight forward gears. Now, as soon as I heard that, I thought, you know, I don't need a 17 bladed razor that connects to the internet and makes my morning espresso. But I get it. That's why Chrysler can claim 19 city, 31 highway. So that's connected to sport mode in the transmission. You get these garden tool like little spades behind the steering wheel. And in a car where everything is enormous, why is this minuscule? Now the other part of that equation is the engine. This is a 3.6 liter V6 and it's surprisingly powerful. My first car was one of these classic American rear-wheel drive family sedans. I had a Caprice Classic. This car has almost half as much engine and makes almost twice as much power. To my great surprise, here is a car with muscle car attitude and a V6 that gets the job done. You ever seen a fat person run? That's the Charger. It's fast. It's surprisingly fast. Now, it's not an amazing engine. I mean, you've got to kind of know how to work it. Below about 3,000 RPMs, it's not really paying much attention to you. And above about 5,000 RPMs, it really, really just wants you to change gear. But you find that sweet spot, and this really has a surprising amount of pull. I'm going to shift down about five gears here, and hey, wake up the V6. You're not exactly going to lose this car in a parking lot. It's really distinctive. When you stand alongside this car, you start to get a sense of how enormous it really is. I mean, you've got to get into something the scale of like an Audi A8 to get into a car that is this large. The styling of this four-door Charger is actually what the first generation should have been. This huge stamped scoop in the side doors is a direct reference back to that old 69 Charger. Chrysler originated that look, but it's become a styling cliche. The thing is though, Chrysler went big with it, and I think it's successful. And because this car is so big, look at the wheels. These are 20s on this car. They're swallowed by the wheel wells. I love this full rear tail light on the Charger. I mean, that is a distinctive feature that references back to the original version and is iconic. It doesn't look like any other car on the road. This blacktop edition has a few extra little things to make your V6 version that much angrier. You get the blacked out wheels, you get the blacked out grille. Guess what? It's just like the name suggests. It also gets a little bit more performance suspension and these performance seats. I am actually surprised at how good these seats are. However, they're made for somebody that's way fatter than I am. How enormous is the enthusiast that is supposed to drive this car? This is like a performance car built for Santa. But as far as comfort, these are the best seats of the three American car manufacturers. And frankly, as astonished as I am to say it, I think Chrysler and Dodge are now offering some of the best interiors of any US automaker. There's a strange piece of plastic over the gauges that has a tendency to refract light in a kind of an odd, bulbous way, but that's pretty much the only major critique I've got of the entire instrument panel. All the surfaces are very clean, they're very pleasing shapes to the eye, it's not edgy or trendy. The door panels reflect the styling theme on the outside of the car. When was the last time you saw that, if ever? The shift knob looks like it could come straight out of an Audi. Now, it's hard to use because every time I think I'm in the right gear, but I'm not. You've got to watch because it's a toggle switch, essentially. It's like driving a mouse. However, the other place this feels like a muscle car is that at 80 miles an hour on the freeway, you feel like you're doing about 40. 
Unfortunately, at 40 miles an hour on a canyon road, you feel like you're doing about 180. I'm shocked this car handles as well as it does. The big problem is it's got a heavy ass. The turn in is initially pretty good, and then suddenly this enormous body shifts through the corner and you realize, oh my lord, this is like driving a house. This can do corners fast in the same way Clydesdale could run the Kentucky Derby. It's got all the right parts, it's just really not the tool you want to pick. I just don't know that it needs to be this big. But of course, you know, we're Americans. We got Montana. You want space? I'll show you space. I mean, this really is a full 7 Series, an S-Class, or an A8 for less than 30 grand. We put all our gear for the shoot in the trunk of this car and went, there's still room left. What do we prop it up against? If you're still skeptical of American cars, I now have more reasons to tell you to buy this car than not. There's a lot to like in this car. It's really got an excellent V6. And this transmission is something off much more expensive automobiles. You can push the charger hard, you can force it into corners, you can squeal the tires. But I want to find the edges of this car about as much as I want to watch an elephant swim. Chrysler is the holdout American manufacturer making this recipe. Huge car, front engine, rear wheel drive, muscle car. I feel like everybody else is afraid to play and make this recipe. So Chrysler, great job. For Camry or Accord money, you can get a really immense family hauling rear wheel drive car with some attitude. And nobody else offers it.